Okay, so I've drawn a picture up here of a, a respiratory bronchiole and an alveoli. And I said associated with the alveoli and the primary bronchioles, I said there are capillaries. And so in addition to the respiratory bronchiole with the air path that we're showing here, into the alveolus, I've also drawn over here a capillary. And the reason I've, I've drawn these is I'm trying to show, first of all, what kinds of cells are present in the alveoli. And so we'll talk about that first. Um, but then we're going to talk about the process of moving the, the oxygen into the blood and CO2 out of the blood. So now when we look at when we look at the cells that are in here, in this alveoli, I, I didn't do a very good job. It's very hard for, to draw really thin cells, but most of these cells right here, these are supposed to be very thin, including that one. And these would be what we would call type 1 cells. And they're something called simple squamous epithelium. And it's a flattened type of a cell um, that means that when we talk about oxygen or CO2 diffusing from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, it doesn't have to pass through too much material. And so we've said there's no cartilage in this part of the bronchial tree, and the, the type 1 cells are what are going to allow for gas exchange. Um, there are alveolar pores, little holes that allow the alveolus to, um, to have a hole into another alveolus, um, and we'll talk about why that is. So if you think about it, we said that we have millions, literally millions of these, of these alveoli in here. And so that means in your lungs, that means they're really, really small. And if you think about, well, what about a droplet? How big is a droplet? Huge, huge compared to these little teensy openings. Now, so if you, we live in, for crying out loud, we live in southwestern Pennsylvania. It rains all the time. And so we breathe in this humidity. And what does water do? Water is polar. So it sticks to itself. It wants to form droplets. And these droplets are way bigger than this alveoli here. So as a result of that, we have to do something to make the droplet smaller. You may have used Rain-X on your curl window, on your windshield before. If you have, if you've used Rain-X on your windshield, you know that rather than having big drops, it breaks them into little tiny drops, and it can be almost mesmerizing, right? You're driving down the road, it's raining, and you have these little tiny droplets that are rising up your windshield because the wind is blowing them up there. That's because Rain-X is something called a surfactant. Well, you have type 2 cells in your alveoli that produce surfactants. What does that do? That makes this dro these drops of water that would condense in your lungs and close off these areas for gas exchange. It makes them break up into tiny droplets so that um, you have air can move in and out of the alveoli. So, so we have type 1 cells that are the ones that allow the gases to move back and forth into or out of the alveoli. And then we have type 2 cells that are producing surfactants. And then the third kind of cell that you have there are macrophages. We'd say, I mean, so if you think about how can pathogens enter into your body? Through your lungs. That's, you know, that's a major way that pathogens can enter into your lungs, into your body. So you have macrophages there that are providing surveillance and defense against um, pathogens. So if we talk, if we focus for a minute on the, the, the movement of a gas, either into or out of the alveoli, and we say, well, what does it have to do 
we'll say oxygen. What does the oxygen have to do to get into the capillary? And the answer, of course, is it has to diffuse across one layer of simple, epi simple squamous epithelium. And then what is a capillary made of? Simple squamous epithelium. So it has to then cross another layer of simple squamous epithelium to enter into the capillary. We said, what is the whole point of all of this? To reoxygenate the blood and to remove carbon dioxide. So when we talk about what is the respiratory membrane over which external respiration occurs, it is two layers, two very thin layers of simple squamous epithelium. That is what the gases must diffuse across.